Dirt Tracks is sponsored by Can-Am, the ride says it all. Polaris, the ultimate in off-road vehicles. Hatfield McCoy Trails, where hundreds of miles of off-road adventure await you today. Yamaha ATVs and side-by-side -side vehicles, real world tough. And by Honda, check out the growing family of Honda ATVs and side-by-sides. The time has finally come. For all you horsepower addicted motorheads who've been frothing at the mouth, pacing back and forth, biting your already chewed off nails, the wait is over. It's time for the most anticipated ATV shootout story ever. It's time to find out which 1000cc Sport 4x4 ATV is the top dog. And while it's been a long time coming, we think it'll be worth the wait. If you're not an adrenaline addicted horsepower junkie who loves to be sideways at 70 miles per hour, you may be wondering what all the fuss is about. To you, I have just two things to say. First, put your big boy pants on and take a Renegade 1000 XXC or a Scrambler 1K for a ride. That's all it takes to fully understand what overpowered muscle bikes are all about. And second, if you have to ask why, you're probably not the target audience for this shootout. Still, you might learn a thing or two, and if nothing else, you'll get to see ATVs slam sweet power slides in slow motion. And honestly, who doesn't love slow motion? The Renegade 1000 XXC is the pinnacle of ATV coolness. Not only does it have a massive one liter V-twin engine and aggressively sculpted, almost mean looking plastic, but it also comes with a long list of legit race ready parts that can handle whatever type of beating you can dish out. Its Fox Podium X RC 2.0 shocks are probably the most impressive of this list. Boku adjustability, race-proven durability, and ego-stroking cool factor are just a few of their most impressive attributes. But most importantly, they work. It doesn't seem to matter what type of rider you are, the RC 2.0s can be set up to provide whatever kind of ride characteristics you are looking for. My only complaint here is how you adjust the compression and rebound on these puppies. I realize a small flat plate screwdriver isn't hard to come by, but everyone around here prefers actual clicker knobs so adjustments can be made anytime, any place, without tools. During my test ride of the XXC, I stated that its whole shot ATR and cast aluminum beadlock wheel and tire package is perfect, and that fact remains true today. Traction on any surface other than mud is almost unbelievable and durability is nothing short of impressive. Ergonomically, the Renegade is fantastic, save for one issue I'll get to in a minute. Bar placement is perfect, and bar width and bend is great for both easy and aggressive riding. The seat is comfortable, and it's padded far enough back that you won't smash your nether bits on this rear rack, or whatever this little thing back here is called. Big bonus points go to the raised and serrated foot pegs. You're not gonna know how much you like them until you've actually tried them. But there is one glaring inequity with the ergos on the Renegade, something that only becomes apparent when you first sit on the scrambler. The space between your feet when planted on the pegs is nearly double that of the Polaris. If you ride horses, you probably won't even notice. But if you ride motocross bikes, performance motorcycles, or even sport ATVs, you're gonna really appreciate the Polaris and probably cringe when it comes time to straddle the Renegade. The Renegade's 1000cc V-Twin produces King Kong torque that's always on tap whenever and wherever you choose to unleash it. The front wheels are rarely on the ground at anything under 40 miles an hour, and steering is better accomplished with your right thumb than it is the handlebars. Sure, it's down on horsepower a bit, and yes, it's not as smooth at slower speeds, but when it counts, you'll never feel like you don't have enough. Can-Am's tri-mode dynamic power steering is hands down the best in the industry. When it was first released, I thought tri-mode was just a gimmick. And yet, I find I'm using all three of the modes at some point or another nearly every time I ride. Race-ready bumpers, handguards, and skid plates are all nice upgrades that come standard on the XXC and are things that, even for an average rider, 
add value to the entire vehicle package. If you wanted to spend less, you can always buy the base model, but that's not what this shootout is about. Dirt Tracks is sponsored by Brimstone, where the journey is your reward. Polaris's Scrambler 1000 is only in its first year of production, but from the moment it was released, it garnered maximum praise from everyone who rode it for very good reason. This is an extremely refined vehicle in terms of performance. It has more horsepower than any production ATV ever built, but puts that power to the ground with almost underwhelming precision. Its parallel twin cylinder mill produces 89 horsepower and barks with authority from its tuned dual exhaust, but it lacks the almost angry low end grunt we've developed a love hate relationship with on the Renegade. And this is a bit of a conundrum. We like the Renegade's mean bottom end, but it can also be tiring and sometimes annoying when you want to ride more like a real human being than a superhero. The Scrambler, on the other hand, is almost telepathic in its power delivery and builds to a mind-blowing mid-range, but lacks that wheelie-popping bottom end. With that said, the Scrambler is no slouch. It makes the meat of its power right in the middle of the power band, which is where you'll be riding it most of the time. It still lifts its front wheels on command, but you can also poke around slowly in the rocks, which makes this engine and clutch package very versatile. The Scrambler is suspended by a set of Fox Podium X 2.0s that offer all the adjustability you really need and do a great job of adapting to almost any riding condition. They lack some of the higher end features of the RC 2.0s, but do include a knob on the compression clicker, so making adjustments is quick and easy. For 90% of the riding the average person is going to do, this suspension setup is excellent. It's smooth on the small stuff, but still soaks up big hits without bottoming. The only time you'll find its limitations is when you push this vehicle to its max in the roughest possible conditions. This is where the Scrambler's more civilized persona becomes most apparent. The Scrambler is not and has never been advertised as a race-ready bike. Unlike the Renegade XXC, it's meant for the trail. Is this bad? Not at all. The trail is where 99% of Scramblers and Renegades will spend the majority of their lives. Before I'd actually spent any time on the Renegade this season, I was sold wholesale on the 14 inch wheel and tire package found on the Scrambler. It gets great traction in almost any condition and it looks super cool. But after spending time with ITP whole shot ATRs on the Renegade, I can see a number of benefits they provide that would vastly improve the Scrambler as a whole. The Scrambler's taller tires do help with ground clearance, but for a vehicle at this level of performance, I think I'd prefer a more performance-minded tire in a set of beadlocks versus a cool-looking set of 14-inch wheels. Ergonomics is one area the Scrambler stands out in a big way. Now, I'm a big guy, and I transition a lot from sitting to standing when I ride. The seating position on the Scrambler is excellent, reach to the bars is spot on, and standing ergonomics are particularly good. But the bars themselves, with the bar mounted headlight and gauge pod, are not the optimal shape for super aggressive riding. On a vehicle like this, I'd prefer to have the gauges mounted on the tank or in front of a set of low rise bars with less aggressive sweep. The bar height could be compensated for with a riser, maybe even an adjustable one. The foot placement on the Scrambler is ridiculously good. A horizontally mounted engine provides a huge reduction in space between the foot pegs. It feels more like you're riding a sport ATV or dirt bike than a beastly 4x4. It also allows you to tuck into the center of the bike more when you're really powering hard through a corner. And finally, your standing position is far more natural. Polaris has developed a power steering system that works really well at both high and low speeds. It's predictable and for the most part invisible while you're riding. But having the ability to choose between three levels of assist on the Renegade has left me feeling a bit confined to just one setting on the Scrambler. If I had to pick just one thing to gripe about with the Scrambler, it would have nothing to do with the ATV itself, but rather a lack of included bonus features versus its only competition. There really aren't any fancy bolt-ons included with the Scrambler. You get cool shocks, nice wheels, and handguards. That's it. If you want anything else, you got to add it yourself. And like I said, this segment is not about sacrificing the goods to save a few bucks. It's about excess at all costs. 
So with that in mind, we strongly feel Polaris needs to release an upgraded model of the Scrambler that includes all the race-ready goodies it's currently lacking. So there you have it, a full breakdown of the industry's only 1000cc Sport 4x4 ATVs. Now that you know what they're made of, let's find out how they compare to one another and how that affects their standings. The Scrambler is definitely the more civilized of the two in nearly every area. Despite its nearly 9% horsepower advantage, it still manages to generate a power band that's smooth as butter. Its suspension is more plush and it's ergonomically more laid back, but it also lacks a lot of the fancy goodies a person buying this bike is going to want. The Renegade is a far more snotty beast. It's abrupt down low, and despite a horsepower disadvantage, it doesn't feel down on power at all. Its ride is far more firm and its ergonomic package far more aggressive. In light of this, its list of race-ready inclusions seems to make a lot of sense. As a buyer, it's important to know yourself and be honest. And if you know that you're more of an average user who wants the big ponies of a 1K ATV, but isn't likely to push it all the way to its limits, the Scrambler is probably the better choice. Day to day, it's gonna provide the most civilized riding experience and be slightly more versatile in the real world. On the other hand, if you know that you push your toys to their limits and understand the trade-off in civility required for maximum performance, the Renegade is probably the better choice for you. But that doesn't really answer the question, which is best? At this point, I'd usually dig into the value aspect of the comparison, but value doesn't rank very high on the list of considerations for a buyer in this class. Which is why we feel the Renegade 1000 XXC offers more of what the buyer of a vehicle like this expects. If Polaris were to offer a more maxed out Scrambler package, we may have to rethink our decision, but as they currently stand, they don't come more maxed out than the XXC. And that's what riding a 1K Sport 4x4 is all about. Dirt Tracks is sponsored by Super ATV, the industry leader in aftermarket parts and accessories for the off-road market. Yes, it does look like a Polaris Razor. I said it, let's get past it. Because while it does have some similarities, there are more differences. Skeptical? I bet you are. I was too. This is a CF Moto Z-Force 800EX, also known as the Sniper 800EX in Canada. And while the information on the website screams Chinese translation, the truth is, CF Moto is leading the way in offshore Chinese ATV and side-by-side -side production, and forging new paths that should not only surprise you, but also concern the North American and Japanese manufacturers. And what I'm referring to is a warranty that's beyond belief an integration of North American parts suppliers that make these vehicles extremely competitive. The first question on everyone's mind when it comes to a newer brand is warranty, parts, and service. This 800 Z-Force has a full five-year warranty. Yeah, five years. That's four more than the competition, and in my opinion, a huge testament to just how much CF Moto stands behind their product. Add to this a supply line with a Canadian clutch manufacturer, CV Tech, as well as the Canadian shock manufacturer, Elka, and you have two very well-known companies teaming up with CF Moto to produce high-quality ATVs and side-by-sides. Under the hood of the Z-Force is an 800cc V-twin with four valves per head. It uses Delphi electronic fuel injection and pumps out enough horsepower to seriously impress. This motor is no toy. This motor is the real deal. And from the time you roll over the ignition and hear the thumpy roar of the V-twin to the point where you bury your foot to the floor and take advantage of all 63 horsepower, you realize CF Moto means business. Low end torque is ample, high speed is reached quickly, and corner to corner flicks of the gas break the wheels loose and allow for serious power slides. And helping to get that 63 horsepower to the ground is a beautiful set of Canadian-made CV Tech IBC clutches that are tuned perfectly to the 800cc V-twin. With 11.8 inches of ground clearance and 11 inches of travel on all four corners, you truly get a quality ride. It's pretty easy to forget you're driving a lesser-known brand when you're behind the wheel. The CF Moto branded shocks are truly capable and soak up the harshest of trail junk. Feature compression and rebound adjustability with easy to use clickers as well as a threaded spring preload. 
While CF Moto did not choose to use Alka shocks on this vehicle, they didn't cheap out with the fully adjustable dampers. Equally as impressive as the very high quality ride this vehicle delivers is the list of standard features that CF Moto includes with the Z Force 800. I mean, it's shocking. I'm truly shocked. This is not an upgraded version, not accessorized. This is stock. The Z Force comes standard with 14 inch deep dish aluminum rims, 26 inch aggressive tires, a one piece injection molded stylized roof, piggyback shocks, fender flares on all four corners, heavily bolstered sport seats, three point harnesses, a full LCD digital gauge pack, LED projector beam headlights, a standard 3000 pound winch with remote, two inch hitch receiver, aluminum A-arm skid plates, selectable diff lock, stainless steel bumpers, and a full on road kit, including turn signals, mirrors, and a horn, making this vehicle legal in places like Moab on the roads right out of the box. Now that's impressive. Besides power steering, the Z-Force comes right from the factory, totally tricked out. The Z-Force not only features a whole pile of cool and functional accessories you'd have to source and install after you buy any other brand rig, but it also comes with an unheard of five-year warranty in Canada and a price tag of $14,195 for the 800EX that I tested today. Okay, so I know that I've been pretty over the top about the Z Force 800, and I also know that it included five year warranty as well as a list of standard features that would cost you over $4,000 aftermarket. Well, it doesn't make it perfect. So, what is it that I don't like? Well, very little. One big gripe, while the interior styling is spot on and feels very comfortable, the lack of an adjustable seat base puts me at six feet tall, a little too close into the dash, and at the same time, rests my right knee squarely into the lower, sharp corner of the instrument panel. Unfortunately, this results in some pretty hard hits into my kneecap, and I've only got one of those left. In four-wheel diff lock, you're gonna feel the steering, but this vehicle has diff lock, so you can choose to use it, and in two-wheel drive, it does not display hard steering characteristics. It all boils down to your comfort level. With a vehicle, you probably haven't seen too many of out on the trails, dealerships that may be new to our sport and names you haven't heard of. But with a price tag, a features list, and a five-year warranty like this CF Moto has, you're crazy not to give them a second look. Dirt Tracks is sponsored by Triton Trailers. Know it, own it, haul it. This season we've been working with Super ATV to transform our 2014 Base 800 Razor into a potent off-road buggy, more comparable to the Polaris Razor S, and we've been using simple to install bolt-on parts. We stripped our Razor down to the tub and removed all suspension and driveline appendages, making the Razor look a lot more like a boat than a buggy. It was a big job, but totally doable for the handyman or woman. With the Super ATV Plus 5 High Clearance Kit, we built our Razor back up to 60 inches wide with incredible high clearance arms and finished the build with extended axles and a low priced Phantom Sport Series rebuildable steel body threaded preload shock. While the performance of the Phantom Sport Series shock was better than stock, I quickly realized that I was driving this rig a lot harder because of the longer suspension and wider arms. And because of this extra abuse, I made a call to Super ATV and asked them for the Phantom Pro Sport Series piggyback shocks. These are a serious upgrade to the high clearance plus five kit I installed. The shocks feature a dual rate spring, full aluminum body, and are completely rebuildable. The best feature of these shocks, besides what I just told you, is the simplicity of the clickers. You have one clicker for compression, one clicker for rebound. It makes it super easy to understand, super easy to adjust, and super easy to tailor to your riding style. When I talk to the folks at Super ATV, they always hook me up with more gear, and this time was no exception. So to make our razor stand out, we're gonna trick it out with a few more key pieces. To protect our rig, we're gonna be installing rock sliders for those times when the ruts get deep and your lower plastics take all the abuse. Super ATV's rock sliders are very easy to install, and if they do get beat up and damaged, you can bring them right back to life with just a little bit of paintable rubberized undercoating thanks to the wrinkle textured finish. Rock sliders give us the confidence that if and when we get carried away and pushed to limits, we won't destroy the factory plastics, but instead spread the load over the surface of the sliders. And hey, they're not only functional, they look pretty darn good too. 
Protection for the buggy is good insurance. Protection for you is also, and it's gonna make your day that much more enjoyable. And that's precisely why I opted for the one-piece molded roof. I installed this same kit on last year's Project 570 Razor and loved how it kept the sun, rain, and mud off me. It's durable, easy to install, and incredibly functional. This project is really starting to take shape. Next week, I have a few more key pieces I wanna add before we go out into the real world and test this vehicle. So stay tuned, and we'll see you then. Dirt Tracks Television has been sponsored by Polaris, the ultimate in off-road vehicles. Can-Am, the ride says it all. MBRP Performance Exhaust, making power with MBRP. Arctic Cat, share our passion. And by Honda, check out the growing family of Honda ATVs and side-by-sides. If you enjoyed this video, post a comment and let us know what you think. Then click this link to subscribe and that link for more great videos from Dirt Tracks TV.